I don't know if you get it from CARB. We would like, we, I, I don't have a lot of confidence in CARB. Uh, we would like the authority to be invested where it exists now under state law with Cal Recycle as it relates to organics diversion and meeting the 50% objective by 2020. It's the same goal. Or eliminate organics or reduce organics from landfills so you get less greenhouse gas emissions years from now. We get that. We would like to have it repose where you put it already in Cal Recycle. I don't want to have to grapple with two independent regulatory entities. We think we negotiated a bill that the entire solid waste industry supported, including local governments. We want the chance, the opportunity to pursue 1826 unimpeded by this bill. Um, we actually think this bill, in combination with 1826, frustrates 1826. It will bring any progress made yet to a halt while we await the three regional hearings. Thank you. Next, opposed to uh, 1383. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. P. Anthony Thomas, representing the California Independent Petroleum Association. Um, remember, just, just for context purposes, methane associated with California natural gas production contributes less, less than one-tenth of one percent of California GHG emissions. Uh, the EPA reported that methane accounts for roughly one-tenth or nine percent of annual U.S. GHG emissions. Based on the fact that California produces only 10 percent of the natural gas it consumes, methane emissions from California natural gas production represents 0.093 percent of California's GHG emissions contributing while providing a lower <coughs> carbon alternative to other <coughs> petroleum fuels. Um, finally, California has existing stringent methane rules, of which the bill does not address, <clears throat> and it also addresses what the bill is attempt to accomplish. Much like my counterpart, Mr. Urban, we have very little confidence in CARB and another, another, another regulatory enhancement given to them without oversight or anything coming back to this building to check on their progress. We stand in opposition to the bill, member. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members. Amy Mago on behalf of the California Chamber of Commerce. Just one point. Considering that this is going to be a new regulatory program outside the purview of AB 32 regulating methane, this will eliminate the potential for offsets of methane within the state, which has been something that we've been trying to work on. The offset potential for dairy digesters within the state will now be eliminated should this become law. Thank you. Uh, Mikhail Scavarla here on behalf of the California Council for Environmental and Economic Balance. Uh, another quick point. Uh, Without cross-references to the existing statute, be it AB 32 or the Clean Air Act, which governs PM and, and, and diesel particulate, we lose all context of all gains that have taken place and currently take place. The billion dollars a year in the South Coast Air District that are spent on PM and diesel alone that have reduced emissions from 1990 levels by 85 percent for black carbon. That's almost the 2050 goal for the IPCC, and yet by moving the date to 2013, as the baseline, we lose all the context of all the gains that have been made in the past few years. You guys remember the diesel trucks circling the Capitol a couple of years back when CARB passed those rules. Well, the investment and the achievements of that industry have brought significant reductions that are just completely ignored by moving that deadline to 2013 once the investment has been made and, and, and the, the emission reductions have been achieved and continue to be achieved. If we look at the emissions inventories over time, we've been on a steady decline. And, and this bill, outside the context of the Clean Air Act, of AB 32, and all the other policies that have been adopted, both locally, federally, and statewide, we, we lose the context that, of the investment that's been made and allow CARB to just determine on their own which rules they wanted to put in place outside the, the laws that have been authorized by this body. And for that reason, we oppose. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Michael Shaw, California Manufacturers and Technology Association, we're opposed to the bill for many of the reasons that have already been stated. Uh, blanket authority for CARB to take certain steps uh, that is not dictated by this legislature is a step too far. Uh, we've seen many examples where agencies granted broad authority have gone beyond 
what I think anybody envisioned at the time. Uh, and we believe this would be another example of that being, uh, being a, a challenge for California manufacturers to operate in this state. Thank you. Mr. Chair, members, Doug Subers on behalf of the Western States Petroleum Association. We're in opposition concerned about this policy being discussed outside of the context of the existing climate policy, the existing air quality regulations, and potential future climate policy. Thank you. Hi, Matthew Allen, Western Growers Association. Uh, we're also opposed to the bill for many of the reasons uh, previously stated, but I would like to also call attention to our concern moving forward. The ag industry has been, um, has invested significant private dollars along with uh, public dollars through the Carl Moyer program to um, put in new pumps, ag pumps, going from diesel to electric, and also uh, getting new tractors and harvesters out in the field. We're worried about what this does in the future and ratcheting down uh, even further uh, the requirements when it comes to issues like black carbon and F gases. We're concerned that in the future we're going to be faced with issues of having stranded assets uh, when our folks have already invested heavily in voluntary emissions reduction programs. So uh, for that reason, we're opposed to the bill. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Lauren Nolan Hajik on behalf of California Citrus Mutual, California Fresh Fruit Association, California Cotton and Ginners, California Cotton Growers and Ginners Association, California Dairies Inc., and Western Ag Processors Association, opposed to this bill for many of the reasons already stated. Thank you. Good morning. Still morning. Tricia Geringer with Agricultural Council of California. Uh, within our membership, we represent over 75% of the fluid milk produced here in the state, and California dairies have led the way on greenhouse gas emissions reductions and have reduced and slashed, quite frankly, their carbon footprint by nearly two-thirds over the last 65 years per glass of milk, a significant amount. Um, we do oppose the bill. We thank very much um, the author for meeting with us to hear our concerns, um, but we do encourage the legislature to instead focus on incentives to reduce um, and incentive projects to reduce short-lived climate pollutants um, to prevent leakage uh, from going outside the state. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Justin Oldfield with the California Cattlemen's Association, also an opposed. I want to thank you very much for giving us just a brief time to uh, also testify on this bill. I just want to follow up on two quick points that uh, uh, Mr. Manning mentioned. One is leakage. Uh, the beef cattle industry, as well as the dairy industry, we are not just competing against uh, producers in other countries. We are competing against producers in states right next to ours. Texas, Kansas, Colorado, all places where our producers will eventually leave uh, if uh, our regulatory uh, uh, threshold is uh, too high. I also want to mention, too, one other point. When we're looking at management practices to reduce methane um, from, from our sector, one, uh, we are probably the largest producer of manure-based compost. And with all the discussions going on around healthy soils, I would hate to see that also leave with the rest of our industry. Um, and then two, uh, when it comes to our enteric fermentation emissions, uh, you know, it, when we talk about management practices and the practicality of applying them on the farm, uh, cattle naturally belch methane. It's part of their digestive process, which we cannot change. Uh, and so we are always looking at new technologies but when it comes to changing the natural digestive tract uh, of an animal, uh, that's something we cannot do, and frankly, it's detriment to its health. So uh, we are in opposition to this bill. Thank you. Good morning. John Moffat on behalf of the Milk Producers Council for all the reasons previously stated were opposed. Dennis Albiani on behalf of the California Association of Egg Farmers and the California Grain and Feed Association. I do want to address Mr. Gaines, Senator Gaines' uh, immediate question, which is what can we do? There is already, under AB 32, methane is already being managed, as discussed very well by Mr. Urban, and those are already being handled. And so further uh, requirements, uh, as Ms. McGoo mentioned, if we add this onto the top of it, those would be additional mandates, which would actually conflict with the investment patterns of cap and trade funds to do you know, public and private investment in dairy digesters is one example. Then once it's a mandate, there's no more public money in that engagement. And so that's really an, a, an example. Also, we just distributed a, a list of 107 metric tons were, were uh, eliminated last year, which was the equivalent of 170,000 cars, just by diesel engine conversion to electricity as well as um, d uh, uh, trucks in agriculture. So those are examples that are working right now today doing it. 
For diesel emissions, their criteria air contaminant. They're regulated under the Clean Air Act. That's already required. If we want to have a discussion, which was a very compelling uh, from the supporters testimony, if we want to have a discussion on air emissions, let's have that discussion on diesel emissions and further push the 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 requirements on on that or you know have that conversation on what's what works. So that's what I wanted to just address that issue. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, we'll close the public comment portion of ours. Um, Senator, where we want to start on um, stranded assets, dairies, wastes, solid waste, cross, cross re references with SB uh, or AB 32, or the natural digestive tracts of our cattle and dairy. Um, <laughs> not before lunch. Not, uh, so please, you have some comments. I, I do. I do. I, I have several comments and. And know that, um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the folks that spoke in, in opposition are actually consider them friends, and we have met with several of them. And let me just say, we're we're early in the process, but we also have to make sure that when we talk about AB thirty two, we know that that doesn't that AB thirty two doesn't set targets for super pollutants, um, and so trying to mix the two, I don't think is appropriate. The the, the word absurd was brought up, and you know what's absurd is not doing anything to protect the health of our children. Um, there are discussions that we are ongoing right now with ARB, and the AB 8, 1826 has been brought up as a discussion. We are working on amendments that we feel are appropriate to meet a whole host of issues that were brought up today. Uh, and as you know, the trajectory of my work, I've always worked to try to find common ground, and I think there's, there's an important consideration here for us to think about, and that uh, um, somebody brought up in the, the, the issue of incentive programs to reduce these short-lived time pollutants. And I think that merits an, an important consideration, given the fact that we now have a source of money where we can actually put our money where our mouth is. I'm not interested in putting dairies out of business. I'm interested in making sure that dairies continue to do uh, everything they can to reduce their methane footprint. Now, that means the state's going to have to set some investment and allow these industries to grow, which means to also help them create a market, to help them um, not only create the infrastructure and the transmission lines to be able to create a market for this new technology. We've seen this at work. We've seen dairymen in other countries work, and my goal is to make sure that we give them those resources to ensure that they can be successful, they stay in the country, and they continue to do the investments, because quite honestly, agriculture has done a lot. But there's still much more that we can do. And I don't want to create a program that's just going to create the stick, but I need incentives. It doesn't, this is all a waste of time if industry can't meet the goals and if industry is not giving the resources to quite frankly get what we're asking them to do done. And those are important conversations that are, are going with me in the ARB. Uh, the issues of accountability, transparency, and oversight are actually priorities for me. Again, ensuring that we're, at, that we're working with the appropriate agencies, that we provide the appropriate oversight and transparency are all priorities for me. And I'm telling you publicly that I'll give my word. We're going to ensure that we get that done. Again, it doesn't behoove anybody to give blanket authority to one agency or to give or not to involve the appropriate agencies to get this done. The fact is that, you know, those are our priorities for me. There's a whole host of issues and and um, and issues that we've been brought up, where we're bringing up with the ARB to ensure that we either coalesce or we create the appropriate changes to ensure that we are not intervening with the with um, the advancements that have been made. But the the fact is that these super pollutants continue to exist. They continue to be a major part of our um, of the issue in terms of our public health. And so, you know, this is a work in progress, and I'm going to continue to meet with the opposition to reach agreements on a lot of these points, but understand that, you know, at the top of this is ensuring that we, um, we work out the, the, these kinks and that we continue to ensure that there is accountability, transparency, and the appropriate oversight. And again, to be completely honest in the fact that I do not want this just to be a stick approach. I want to be able to provide the resources so that our industries can continue to meet these uh, these goals that ARB has set that are attainable. 
And that, again, will make us the leaders in the world to ensure that we address, finally address the issue of super pollutants. It seems like much of our debate was focused on the methane and the uh, uh, anthropogenic uh, black carbon. Is there anything <coughs> on the um, fluorocarbon, hydrofluorocarbons, that it seemed like there wasn't much discussion either pro or con on it? It's, it must be the, the ugly of the three super pollutants. <laughs> well, I'm trying to invite more opposition. I'm yeah. No, no, I'm just, I'm just saying, do you have, did you have anything? <laughs> Go we, ahead. You have, you have three, you have three uh, prongs here. Right. Right. And, you know, these are ongoing discussions again. This, I mean, this is not, these are not easy discussions that we're having. We know that um, in all these three segments, there's industries that are going to push back. But my opinion is that I think now that we have um, the resources, in my opinion, to really assist industry in meeting our goals is something that I'm that we're looking at and we're talking with the governor's office. Okay, members, do we have questions of the author, Senator Bates? Uh, if not, question just a statement. First of all, Senator uh, Lara, I do appreciate uh, your com your <coughs> dedication to this whole issue regarding what affects our disadvantaged communities. As you know, that used to be my beat when I was a social worker. However. Giving sweeping uh, uh, responsibility and authority to uh, CARB is very disturbing in all the approaches that we're taking to try to rein in greenhouse gas. I think that if there's anything that I would ask you to do with full heart, soul, and mind is to rein in that kind of authority given to them. If they are developing strategies, those should be brought back uh, through you to this committee, uh, to the legislature as a whole. Uh, because if we don't do it as one, and I refer to our esteemed chair, who spoke about that uh, quite often this morning in terms of looking at drinking water, if we're not doing this as one, then we really do have unintended consequences, and I won't go through the litany of those. So you need to be committed, as you've heard from the industry, to work very closely with them, certainly with CARB, uh, because we have appointed them to do a very difficult job. But my experience with them, they don't listen. I mean, you have these public hearings, you get your three minutes, they go and do exactly what they intended to do when they put it all together. That needs to come back through the elected representatives to really hone in and listen to uh, each and every party to the contract to ensure that we are not creating unintended consequences, and you've heard a number of those. So that would be my charge to you, my request of you, so that we really can address what is a serious issue for people who live in these areas where they are, you know, actually bombarded with, you know, everything. I mean, noise, uh, pollutants, and I think we all have a great concern and compassion for that. But we don't solve it by just handing it over to a group that is intended to do one thing is shut down an industry. Can't do that. So those are those are my recommendations, and I hope you'll take some Thank of you. them to heart. If I can, Senator Bates, you know, I know you know the area well. We've talked often about right. your beat as a social worker in, in my district. And know that, and, and I'll, I'll say it here publicly, and I'll say it again, my interest is to provide the appropriate oversight and ensure that the legislature remains um, active in, in the transparency and process of these regulations. Again, my goal is to get something done for the health of our children and also ensure that we recognize that the ag industry has gone, done, done a good job of, of meeting the regulations that we put forth and have been, quite frankly, innovators when it comes to uh, you know, uh, protecting the use of our water, uh, ensuring that they adapt to climate change. Um, and so I recognize all that. And I think in me you're going to find somebody who's willing to have that conversation. And I've had my own issues with CARB when it comes to ensuring we have resources for our most um, uh, impacted communities. And I've experienced this, that same uh, time, type of um, resistance. And so I understand where we're all coming from and know that I want to be able to ensure that we continue to, to work with that agency, but also involve the other appropriate agencies and ensuring that our businesses uh, continue to be resilient under what, uh, you know, what we're asking them to do. And I recognize that. Uh, my interest is not to put them out of business, but to also make sure that they continue to be partners and good stewards, ensuring that they can also pro, uh, con contribute to the uh, health of our community and our residents that are clearly impacted by these super pollutants. The science is very clear, members. Super pollutants are detrimental to the health of our children and to our seniors. 
I'm going to work to try to get work hard this year to ensure that we get a compromise and that we provide the resources needed so that our industries can meet these new requirements. Thank you. Senator Pavley. Uh, yes, uh, in a very important topic in meeting all of our climate objectives, where you get the most bang for your buck, really, to meet 2030, especially 2050, is um, investment in thoughtful programs uh, related to short-lived climate pollutants. I like super pollutants. That's actually a very good way to talk about it. Senator Lara, I, I think Senator Lara has a track record of tackling difficult subjects, but doesn't move forward unless he gets people on board. And so I think he can do this. I think working with CARB, with, for example, Karen Ross in the Department of Agriculture could be an interesting conversation. I know that there was a tentative agreement with um, SoCal Gas and the Air Resources Board regarding methane mitigation relating to Aliso Canyon. That was uh, a great percentage of it was going to go to wastewater treatment plants, but also dairy digesters. There's an increasing amount of interest in dairy digesters being part of the solution. We worked with the agricultural community who had a lot of problem with air pollution standards in the Central Valley, brought them into the full of car moyer and other kinds of programs to reduce uh, diesel emissions in trailers and other off-road vehicles that they use in operations. So we need them to be a partner. I do not know if there's baselines established for methane reductions in in dairies, and if so, that might be a good voluntary way to start reporting them because I'm all for incentivizing good behavior as people move forward and making good efforts to reduce methane. Um, they should be uh, first in line for any kinds of um, financial incentive programs that might get them to do more. So um, this is really an important space to, to have a discussion, and it's not um, competing with CARB, but it's providing that national, uh, that additional oversight over what they do. I know Senator Lahr is not afraid to get in a room with leaders of CARB and challenge them on, like, say, trucks and natural gas and things like that. So um, it is incumbent upon this legislature to form select committees, have informational hearings, um, but sending that signal, we know short-lived climate pollutants are incredibly an important solution to meet 20, 30, 20 posts. If we don't address that, then someone else is picking up the rest of the reductions. So we need to get everyone at the table, and I look forward uh, to working with you. If I can be of any assistance, don't hesitate to call. But I think we can find a baseline approach, incentives. When we did a voluntary reporting in the past, originally on greenhouse gas emissions, those people who made those good faith efforts early got rewarded at the end of the day in meeting targeted reductions. I'll we'll so, need that discussion with Cal Recycle also on, on where they're at. Senator Leonard, okay. Leno. You remember me. Yes. And I'd be, right. Thank you. I'd be glad to move the bill if it's appropriate. First of all, my apologize. apologies for missing the entire morning. I've been in Labor Committee uh, mm -hmm. since 9 o'clock. And Senator Lara, you certainly know how to fill a room. <laughs> uh, I also regret having uh, missed your presentation and all of the public comment. I just want to recognize your efforts on an issue you've been so committed to for so many years, and it is obviously a very ambitious bill. And oftentimes, I'm not uh, here to suggest where you're going with the bill, but we start very broadly, and through working with oppositional voices, we find out what we can do because this is the uh, art of the possible. And I know of significant concern for you is air quality and the impacts it has on, as you've mentioned, children, seniors, and specifically <coughs> disadvantaged communities. Uh, I, working with Senator Pavley this year on a different bill that also addresses methane emissions, this being <coughs> fugitive emissions in our systems. And what drives me in that is that I think it's so easy when we're focused on day-to-day -day issues to put out of our minds, and it's not just for legislators but the general public, the severity of the pace of climate change. 
we've had the hottest winter in the Arctic ever. Ice caps are melting. Antarctica is at risk of falling a good chunk of it into the sea, and sea level rise is going to be impacting our decision making. I know, Mr. Chair, you've been dealing with uh, this issue as well. So I just want to encourage your efforts uh, with this bill and uh, to give some encouragement to all those who have come to express their concerns, all of which are real, that uh, they're working with uh, one of the best authors around to uh, find some common ground. Senator Laura, do you think anything else needs to be said? No. There's a motion before us. <clears throat> um, with that, I'll take this. What it's ever been said is your close. Um, let's call the roll. Item 10, SB 1383 by Senator Lara. The motion is due pass as amended and referred to Committee on Appropriations. Senators Wykowski? Aye. Wykowski, aye. Gaines? No. Gaines, no. Bates? Hill? Jackson? Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Pavley? We'll keep the matter open uh, for those. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You Members, appreciate your time. Here. And we'll thank the ever patient Senator Liu. You are up next. This is item number seven, uh, SB 1018. Unless you want to, you know, you have comments on uh, black carbon. No, I just, this is yet another non-controversial me measure. Yeah. Please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, SB 1018 is a district bill concerning the State Route 710 at the other end, uh, the North Project, which has a long and storied past. The intent of the bill is to bring more transparency and clarity to the process which has been murky at best thus far, for about 60 years maybe. To the point today, LA Metro is managing LA Metro is managing the 710 North Project, EIR, EIS process, released a cost-benefit analysis of the project's alternatives midway through the comment period on the draft EIR, EIS. <coughs> and at the time, <coughs> Metro stated that the um, cost-benefit analysis was not part, not part of the EIR, EIS, but that it would uh, be relied upon in making a decision on the preferred alternative. Thousands of comments were submitted on the draft EIR EIS and the uh, cost benefit analysis, many critical of the environmental and economic analysis, uh, analytical approach, methodology, and conclusions. The intent of this bill is to make sure that Metro responds to public comments on the uh, cost benefit analysis with the same level of intensity that CEQA and NEPA require for response to comments on the draft EIR EIS. Your committee analysis recommends a different approach to achieve this end, and I'm happy to accept the recommended amendment. Members, the public is confused. They are trying to participate in the public review process for a very controversial project, and it's still not clear which agency is the lead agency for the project and who will make the final decision on the preferred alternative. SB 1018 is an attempt to clarify at least the substantive base upon <coughs> which that decision will be made. Very simple, and I ask for your support on the bill. Are there witnesses here in support of uh, SB 1018? So. Are there witnesses here opposed to SB 1018? It's here. As amended. Right. Oh. Hey, Michael. Hi. <laughs> Good morning, Senator. Um, Good afternoon, Senator. Uh, Michael Turner on behalf of the um, Metropolitan Transportation Authority. And I want to start my opposition with um, two apologies and a thank you um, on this bill because uh, I first have to apologize for the senator and the committee if we got our opposition letter in late. So I want to apologize for that. But I also have to be frank and thank the senator uh, for this bill because there has been clearly a question about the role of the uh, uh, cost-benefit analysis in this process. 
And the author's office highlighted how there were, quite frankly, documents that were issued by our agency and by Caltrans that were not consistent with respect to the status of the CBA and the environmental document. Um, we have since uh, received clarification from Caltrans as the lead agency in, the, in both environmental processes that they consider the CBA to be a part of the environmental document. It is included um, in their website as a technical uh, attachment to the environmental document. And we will be working with Caltrans to respond to the comments uh, that are submitted on the entirety of the CBA, excuse me, entirety of the EIR, as well as the CBA. I have to be frank that that would not have happened if this bill were not introduced. And that is clear because um, there was no discussion about that issue, I think, um, to the extent that we were able to get that clarification prior to the bill's introduction. Nonetheless, this is, again, awkward part number two. Uh, our board is in opposition to the bill. Um, we have not taken a position on the amended version of the bill, so we will go back and review those amendments with our board and uh, revise our position based on those amendments. Enough. Next. Hi, Mr. Chair and, and members. My name is Steve Placido, and I'm here in opposition of SB 1018. The City of Alhambra and the 710 Coalition have been longtime advocates for the completion of the 710 Gap. Because of the, the congestion that we experience every single day as people make over 80,000 daily trips on the local street systems. For more than six decades, the state, by not finishing the last piece of the LA freeway system, has exposed our, our school children to experience higher than necessary air pollution caused by day and night bumper to bumper traffic in portions of the San Gabriel Valley we all call home. Over 20 local governments have passed resolutions in support of the GAPS completion, which Caltrans and LA Metro have now are now studying. Specifically, these cities support the construction of a tunnel. While most of these cities are in the San Gabriel Valley, there are cities like Huntington Park and Southeast Los Angeles that support the project. This is the first time in over 60 years that Caltrans and LA Metro are close, are close to finding a viable transportation solution that will relieve congestion in the San Gabriel Valley and the entire Los Angeles region. <coughs> The environmental impact report in progress is in progress and is funded by Measure R, which was passed by two-thirds of the Los Angeles County voters in 2008, mandating transportation upgrades throughout the county. The EIR has been ongoing for over six years at a cost of $40 million. This legislation is unnecessary. It is, it is just yet another attempt by a small group of cities to stop any work that would allow for the construction of a 710 tunnel. Several of your colleagues in the state Senate are in support of the building, are, are in support of building the 710 tunnel because of the health and air quality benefits. As indicated, oh, as identified in the environmental work that would benefit the greater Los Angeles area. I respectfully ask for a no vote. Thank you. Others Thank you. opposed to um, SB 1018. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Justin Fanzal on behalf of the California State Pipe Trades Council. I apologize for just notifying you. We were just informed by our client that they are joining the coalition of, led by the State Building Trades opposed to the measure. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Paul Gonzalez representing the city of Rosemead. Rosemead is part of the 710 Coalition, and simply out of time, we'll align our comments with the city of Alhambra in opposition. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, member Cesar Diaz on behalf of the State Building and Construction Trades Council also want to align ourselves with the arguments the opposition has made. This project is a long time in the making. We're hoping that we could get uh, into construction anytime soon, but uh, this bill will essentially kill that project. So for those reasons, we were carefully opposed. Thank you. All right, we'll close the public hearing. Um, Senator Liu, yes, this sir. small bill has actually got Caltrans and MTC hey. to sit down and figure out who is the lead agency. Isn't that amazing? It's, it's, now, there, it's not the perfect bill. No. It's not the perfect bill. No. But, you know, it seems to me that 
this bill should have another day to live. Thank you. Uh, you know, so that we can make sure, because was the confusion now MTC is the lead agency. Was that a switch from Caltrans or was it always MTC with some clouds? The latter. Okay. All right, Qu questions by members of the senator. You're confused. <laughs> you can read my face that easily. So am I, <laughs> but it's okay. I'm just getting up to speed on the complexity of this and reading the analysis over 50 years, now I hear 60 right. years. Many years. Uh, gosh, my lifetime at least. Yes. So I, I would agree with the chair that you clearly have some accomplishment already with the introduction of the bill. It needs to go to transportation. There'll be further conversations. Who knows what else will happen? Correct. Uh, but I think it deserves to move forward beyond this committee. So not without reservations and concerns. Absolutely, absolutely. And at least a little bit of visible confusion. I will support the bill today. Thank you, thank you. Others, questions? You may close if there's anything else. Well, I mean, it, it is uh, remarkable that uh, we're still here talking about this particular project. And um, I, don't, I think it'll live on past my term here in the, uh, in the legislature. But it's just part of the process. And the process has really taken too long. And uh, we're trying to get folks to communicate with one another. And we've tried for a very long time to do this. And uh, we're glad we introduced the bill simply because it has jump-started some action here, and we uh, would like to continue the conversation with uh, everyone to make sure that uh, we're gonna get this uh, resolution made on this particular project, one way or the other. And if I may ask, since I serve on the Transportation and Housing Committee, if oh, you yes can- yes, you do. If you, if, if you can get direct verification from MTC as, we, as a testimony today, <laughs> Um, by Mr. Arnold uh, indicated so that we have that and that the environmental document or the CBA is going to be at, attached to so those those steps that move forward that that's clear. Okay, all right, we'll all right. do that by the next time. We'll if, do that. We have a motion on the amended <coughs> matter. Please call the roll. Item 7, SB 1018 by Senator Liu. The motion is due pass as amended and referred to Committee on Transportation and Housing. Senators Wykowski? Aye. Wykowski, aye. Gaines? No. Gaines, no. Bates? No. Bates, no. Hill? Jackson? Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Pavley? We'll keep the roll open. It's uh, two to two. All right, thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you for your patience waiting. Mm -hmm. Senator Walk, another patient person this morning. Unhealthy soils. This is item number nine, members, SB 1350. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, uh, this bill is sponsored by the Department of Food and Agriculture. Um, and Senator, if I, yes. we had a uh, complete hearing on Senator Laura's black carbon uh, methane bill and many uh, uh, references to the benefits of healthy soils from manure. manure. So it, you weren't here, but it was a robust conversation earlier today as a, as a, a good and source. Good. 